Misogyny, Racism, and Elves. Not the Santa's workshop kind, but the tall, supermodel-looking ones. Yeah, those. Usually these topics don't exactly go together, but the online film bros from Twitter have pushed boundaries once again to bring us today's wonderful topic of analysis. I'm not gonna lie to you, this story sucks and I hate thinking about it, but if I don't talk my thoughts out loud, my brain is going to electrocute itself, so you're in on the journey with me. So today let's talk about movie trailers, representations of race, and film nerds loudly complaining about stuff that they don't think we should enjoy. Oh. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me here today. Okay, so you know that super fun pattern that the entertainment industry goes through where whenever they announce a reboot or a remake of an older project, it's slightly more progressive in order to reflect modern times and the antiquated film nerds who grew up watching the older version complain a lot and get indignant and hostile at the th times changing? Well, it's happening again. Earlier this week, Amazon Studios released a short teaser trailer for their new upcoming show, The Rings of Power. It's a prequel series set in the world of the Lord of the Rings films, a franchise close to a lot of people's hearts, including my own. The trailer itself didn't reveal much, but showed some footage of the set pieces, new creatures, and some interesting and diverse new characters. Do you have any guesses as to why we're talking about it today? Yeah, the backlash to this casting choice of a black elf and a black dwarf was mostly fueled by racist remarks and unfunny jokes. These people were also mad that the central character is a woman who appears to be a knight. On top of everything else, people also complained about this elf with short hair, because these people just need to complain about literally everything, I guess. Now, this is not a very surprising response from online movie nerds, which is upsetting, but... Unfortunately, we seem to repeat this pattern every five months whenever a new movie or project is revealed. Like, I just made a video on this thing where there was a racist response from a franchise casting one black woman. Like, this happens a lot. It's periodic. Most of the tweets are not very surprising. It's your basic, oh, this is too woke now, or oh, they're feminizing my childhood, or I'm so scared about media not being about me that small details like the main characters of a prequel show to a movie that came out two decades ago is very terrifying to me because I can't somehow relate to it. And look, I'll level with you. If I wanted to phone it in today, this whole video would just be me reacting and laughing to these dumb tweets, because there's a lot of them. And then at the end, I would just say, all right, everybody, don't be racist, don't be sexist, and don't make a big thing out of little things. And that would have been it. I would cash the check, go home, and like probably sleep the rest of the night. Why did I say go home? I am home. But it's not so simple. And frankly, this response seems to happen so much that I don't feel like brushing it off this time. Shrugging at casual racism doesn't fix anything. I want to know why, specifically, these people are upset or mad at this show, because I don't get it. Like, I'm not trying to say I'm this perfect example, but, like, I see a show with, like, a few black people and a woman in it, and it's like, that feels normal to me. Why? Why is that something so simple? causing such a big uproar. Like right now, I don't understand. And that's what I want to figure out today. I want to understand what, why is this a big deal? What, what is happening that like, I'm not getting. But before we get into that, there is one bad response that I do want to laugh at just because it's, it's very stupid. This single image is what burning $1 billion looks like. Good luck, Amazon. You'll need it. This picture is literally just a woman in armor. That's it. Everything else is out of focus. How is one billion dollars being wasted here exactly? Unless that explosion back there is a pile of money literally being set on fire, this guy's point makes no sense. All right, I'm not just highlighting this tweet because it's dumb, even though it is. This one is special because it comes from one of the loudest voices of the 
online angry movie review community. And if we're going to learn more about how these people think, I think we got to start here. As of right now, I don't understand why so many people would just be mad at the concept of an elf being black. And I'm going to have to wade into some of their territories online if I'm going to figure out how they're thinking. And we might as well hear about this from someone who all of these people flock to, so let's figure out what the critical drinker has to say about this. The concept around this guy's channel is that he reviews movies and shows after he gets a little tipsy. He angrily insults and berates the films he hates and sloppily applauds the films he likes. Because that's what film criticism really needed drunk complaining. If you watch like a video and a half from this guy, you'll see that he lines up pretty well with our black dwarf bad crowd. He constantly insults feminists, he mocks any semblance of identity politics, and he keeps including that one reaction video of a woman crying at an anti-Trump rally whenever he talks about anything progressive. And I'm not here to bash this guy, we clearly view the world differently, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to learn from a prominent figure the, the mindset that these people review movies with. Clearly, his content is reaching out to a lot of audiences. Like, his videos do well, and he seems to be trusted when it comes to film criticism. Lucky for us, he's already uploaded a video about this trailer, and I'm confident that if I watch it through, I can probably get inside the mind of someone who is repelled at the concept of diversity. Wait, is that, is that really what I want to do? Okay. I think I get it. And yeah, he did use the reaction video of the woman crying and then followed it up with the J.K. Simmons laughing reaction video, so... Classic comedy. But he does explain his thought process in the video. He states that he is annoyed by movie studios pandering to woke audiences by diversifying their cast, but he's not morally against it. Where his problem lies is with this specific franchise, and the comment section of the video is all in agreement that for some reason Lord of the Rings is the one that can't do this. And this is where I think we can start piecing together the fragments of their argument. And if I really want to understand the other side of this debate and really get why there's this backlash, I think I'm gonna have to go a little bit deeper. Now, I'm a pretty big fan of the Lord of the Rings franchise, but I've got to admit, it does not do really great at representing people who are not white. And just for reference, I edited together a quick montage of all of the non-white characters in the series, and here it is. Yeah. Yeah, not really great stuff. And that's most likely because the novels these films are based on were written back in the 1940s from an author with an antiquated education on race, like most white people had back then. What's ironic is that Lord of the Rings focuses heavily on race relations. But they're, they're fantasy races. In fact, a very central theme of the story is the tensions between the races of the elves, the dwarves, the humans, and the short stacks. But we get to see our main characters overcome those judgments and learn to trust each other as we follow them throughout the series. How did you film nerds miss that? The entire point of the franchise is to look past appearances and focus on people's heart. Were you so distracted by the dragons you forgot to not be racist? But those themes aside, the book is very specific to detail the characters as fair-skinned, and the movies reflected that vision. The cast is almost exclusively white, and it's additionally very male-centric. There are really only four plot-relevant and named female characters in the movies, and one of them is a giant spider monster. Tolkien just didn't write this story to be inclusive of anyone who might read it. He wrote it with a very specific lens in mind, that being white men. So then this trailer comes out and features characters that defy those preconceived notions, and it doesn't exactly line up with what they'd grown up with. Mr. Film Alcohol back there said that because Tolkien's original vision for this world was a take on medieval Europe, it makes sense why the characters are predominantly white and male, and that's why the sudden inclusion of something different doesn't fit this story's mold. 
Okay, I think I'm starting to understand the point of view of these people. They're not mad at women or black people as communities. They're just mad at their involvement in this story that beforehand it wasn't made for them. Like they think it was made for white men because that's what it focused on. That's why this is a shock to them. That's why they're angry. Okay, I think I get it. One small thing though, who cares? I know I said earlier that I didn't want this video to just be mocking and laughing at these people, but come on, I'm reaching my breaking point. Why is that the hill you want to die on? The exclusion of diversity is such a stupid thing to be defensive over. Why are you gatekeeping Lord of the Rings? Angry Drink Man does say that we need to respect the original artist's vision and intentions and inserting our own agendas isn't fair to the source material. And to some degree, I do agree that adaptations of source material should respect the author's original intentions. But maybe if you're going to look at something written a hundred years ago, it might need some updating. I don't know if Tolkien himself was racist, but like... Even so, man, just, it's not that big of a deal to not have it be all white people. And here's another important thing to bring up. Amazon, boo, you suck, owns the intellectual rights to make this show in the first place because they couldn't be making the series if they didn't. And since they own the intellectual property, they can do literally whatever they want with it and to it. Sure, in those thousand-page Bibles they call a book, it might say somewhere that there wasn't anyone with dark skin, but the Amazon writers could literally just sit down and be like, okay, but like, one time there was a comet that hit a mountain and all the space dust from the comet fell on the crops and plants, and then the people that ate those plants over generations grew to have darker skin. Done. Boom. And there you have it. All it takes is a writer to say that, and then you have an in-universe reason why people with dark skin would exist, and it would just instantly be accepted into the canon. I don't think that's the reason they should go with? Like, the space meteor thing? Don't do that. I'm not a good writer. And come on, the show hasn't even come out yet. Maybe they do give a reason for why dark-skinned elves exist and why they aren't seen in the main movies, but... We haven't even given the writers a chance to see what they do. But honestly, even then, it's unnecessary. Most importantly, it shouldn't be an issue for black people to exist in this franchise based around some in-universe reason. Fuck an in-universe reason. People of all races should be involved in major pop culture franchises because why not? It's good for people to see people that look like them and feel represented. That's... There's nothing wrong with that. Groups of people are diverse. Therefore, our media should be diverse to reflect that. Easy. You can call me a beta, you can call me a soy boy, I don't care. That's the hill I'm gonna die on. Like, good racial representation in media, TV shows, movies, whatever. It's important, and I think it's a good thing. Oh, and don't worry, it is in Lord Amazon's best interest to diversify that cast. They didn't do this so young kids could look up to people that look like them. They knew that appealing to more audiences draws in more money. They are profit-driven business. They don't do anything if it doesn't make them money, including this. So to recap, these people, mostly white men, are mad that black elves and black dwarves exist without some reason behind it. They're mad that this elf lady is just wearing armor and acting like a knight, and Oh yeah, they're mad at the elf with the short hair because, again, they just pick things to be mad at. Do y'all have hobbies? And look, you might hear all of that and say, Duncan, what does it matter? I don't care about Lord of the Rings. I don't care about these film nerds complaining. And it's not like their complaints are going to change anything. It's just a waste of time to even focus on it. To which I'd say, yeah, I wish. But these angry nerds might actually have the power to influence the media we all get exposed to to change because they are consumers and they are vocal and companies aren't afraid to change based on what their vocal consumers want. And in terms of movie studios, 
this has happened before. Do you get it? Force correction? Like, course correction? But it's the force? We're talking about Star Wars, by the way. A few years ago, that little indie movie Star Wars got rebooted, and the trailer for a new movie was released. In this trailer, audiences saw a leading woman and a black stormtrooper, and the expected racist and sexist backlash happened like clockwork. Like I said, it happens often. In the actual movie, however, the stormtrooper Finn has one of the more interesting arcs, and his character was really compelling to watch. Personally, John Boyega's charismatic performance is one of my favorite parts of the entire franchise. The fact that this character was black actually had no negative impact on the story, which probably blew those angry people's angry little minds. And likewise, Rey was a fun character to follow who felt more than capable of carrying the story on her shoulders. These two characters felt really well made in that first movie, and with a teased romantic spark between them, it promised more interactions between these two cool characters. Things looked pretty promising. But after the movie's release, there was a very loud and vocal part of the fanbase that wasn't interested in Rey and Finn's dynamic, and campaigned heavily for Rey to end up with the villain of the story, the greasy, evil space wizard Kylo something, I don't know. Because the Finn fans weren't loud enough, and the Raylo audience was impossible to ignore, Disney made the finance-driven decision to pivot their plans and focus more on that. Sure enough, in that second Star Wars movie, Rey and Finn spend the entire movie apart, while Rey and Kylo's dynamic is explored with the entire movie's runtime. Finn is hastily given a new love interest, which is written not so great, and the overall story isn't terrible, but it's a big change from that first movie. And meanwhile, those angry film nerds took the opportunity to complain about Finn being a waste of screen time and not leading to much, and regarding Rey with their typical talking points of overpowered woman, she's just there for branding, feminism scares me, you know, etc. I bring it up to say that it's not like these movies don't listen to their audiences. Like, not necessarily to give them what they want, but more so to get the most money out of them. Like, it... It all comes down to money. Sorry. These big movie studios are not making movies because they just love cinema. They're doing it to make a return on investment. They're trying to turn a profit. I think that after Amazon releases this first season, if they think it's financially smart to appeal to those loud, angry nerds, they'll convince the writers of the show to move in that direction. I'm sure of it. So yeah, I do think it's worth our time to deconstruct why the argument against having black people in the show is dumb and like not of any substance because if we don't push back the movie people will think that that's the way to go i said the movie people oh man that's embarrassing and look i don't think this video is going to change the minds of any of those angry film people because they love to argue if anything they're in my comments right now trying to win a debate against me it's not working. I just hope that this video is reaching the right people, right? It's the people that know that having black characters is not an end of the world universe breaking problem. Like it's just normal. It's good and it should happen more often. But hey, I hate ending videos on a bad note. So let's talk about the good stuff. Thankfully, The Lord of the Rings does not just appeal to white men who like sword fighting. A huge portion of the fan base would rather connect with the tenderness, emotion, and themes of love these movies have. Lord of the Rings is often a fan favorite in a lot of queer communities because this movie is just so gay. These movies have so much gay subtext that it's almost just like regular text. The love these characters show for each other is such a welcome change of pace in action movies that... Oh my god, I'm thinking about the boat scene. Fuck, oh, I'm gonna cry. And though the quantity of women in these movies is not large, the quality of them shines far beyond expectations. I am not including the spider for this one. Galadriel's character is powerful and mysterious. Arwen's storyline is rich and compelling to follow, and Eowyn... Eowyn is just the best part of this entire franchise. She was my first on-screen crush as a kid, and I don't think I ever really outgrew that. She's just... Ugh... She's just so cool. And like the creativity from these fans is beyond inspiring. The fan art and the cosplay and even the fan fiction that these dedicated fans can 
create just from being inspired by this world is it's great it's beautiful like that kind of inspiration tells me that this franchise is doing its job this kind of dedication and care is what i think being a lord of the rings fan should be about it's not gatekeeping the race of the actors but it's appreciation and inspiration and just enjoying how gay these little movies are. In conclusion, if this spin-off show doesn't appeal to those film nerds who think that everyone in the movie should be white, good. A modern show should reflect the time it's in, and having a lead woman and black characters in the show isn't like an amazing thing, it's just normal. This is what should be base level, and I don't know. I hope this show finds its fans. Anyway, I think we should end this video with like a sneak peek at what the lazy version of this would have been. Ha ha ha, what a dense and inconsiderate tweet. Man, those film nerds sure are annoying. Anyway guys, don't be racist, don't be sexist. Uh, that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and like and subscribe and like and subscribe and like. Thank you all for watching me rant about a movie franchise I like for way too long. I hope you thought it was interesting and worth it because I'm about to go edit this thing and I don't think I should have talked for this long. I'm gonna, oh my God, this is gonna kill me. Thank you to my patrons for financing this video and giving me a little extra change so I don't have to worry about bills kicking my ass while I dedicate time to ranting about dwarves and elves. I appreciate everything that you guys do for me, and I am sending as much good energy to you as I can. I I don't know how, but I'm trying. For the people at the very end of this video, just between you and me, I didn't love the Rings of Power trailer either, and it's not because of any of the reasons I've talked about before, it's because the trailer was just kind of empty? Like, I don't know anything about the story. I don't know most of these characters' names. It was just a sizzle reel of, like, s shots in the show. I don't know. I didn't love it. But don't tell anyone, because that would undermine the entirety of this video. Anyway, take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next one. My stomach is growling. I hope you didn't hear that. Anyway, I love you lots. Bye.